Hi class, this is um, Dr. Nurse Storms in my office solving another NMR problem for you to get you back in the groove with NMR. We are going to review NMR in class this week. Okay, this NMR is a little different from the last one and I have no IR with it. Okay, so let's take a look at it. Um, it has the formula C11H16. Okay, the first thing you'd want to do in most problems would be to calculate the unsaturation number. This is the actual formula. This is the saturated formula, which would be C11, what would it be? H, CN, H, 2N, plus 2, if you've forgotten that, okay? C11, therefore it would be C11, H, 2N, plus 2, would be 22, plus 2, would be 24, okay? The difference is 8. Remember, we divide this by 2 because we're interested in pairs of hydrogens. This will equal four pairs, okay? Now, what does that mean? I've had people in my office recently asking me what does that mean. Each double bond in a, an unknown such as this results in the loss of one pair of hydrogens. Play with your models. Just prove this to yourself. Each ring results in the loss of one pair of hydrogens. Each triple bond results in the loss of two pairs of hydrogens. And the deal is, if you have four pairs, that means you've lost some combination that adds up to four. And I always tell people when they see four to think benzene Because benzene, a benzene ring consists of one ring, that's the loss of one pair, and three double bonds, that's the loss of three pairs, okay? So, we're going to interpret this NMR spectrum, which is pretty fundamental, but it's different than anything you've seen. First thing we do, fill in the chart, okay? The first peak is at about 1.2, it has an area of 9, it, has, it is a single. What is the conclusion? You guys actually did very well with this on your last test. Um, nine identical hydrogens. There are several ways to do that, but the most probable way is a tertiary butyl group. And that should be your first guess, okay? Especially if you're down in this low end of the spectrum. So if you see C, CH3, if you see nine, the most likely way to have nine is to have three methyls on the same carbon. It's kind of like saying three hydrogens are the same on one methyl. What does this number mean, this 1.2? Look on your chemical shift table. It just means these are run-of-the-mill hydrogens that are not really affected by electronegativity and they're not really affected by pi systems. They're really not near anything. They're just regular old methyl groups. Probably a T-butyl. That's a huge chunk of structure. It's also saying they're isolated, which means they are not splitting anything. Okay, the next one is at 2.5. It has an area of 3. It's a singlet. It's a methyl in all likelihood. That's the best guess. And once again, it's isolated. What about this position? What does that position mean? This is what I call carbonyl territory and also benzylic territory. So very typically, and look on your table to justify this NMR table. I want you to start using your NMR table more. If you have hydrogens on the carbon right next to a benzene ring, this is called benzylic, they will be around 2.5 ppm. Also, hydrogens next to carbonyls are in this range look on your NMR table. That's what I want to, that's the step forward I want to take with you guys. Okay? Alright, next, last but not least, seven parts per million. That should send off bells in your head. Seven. Seven is aromatic territory, right? One of the things that causes tremendous chemical shift change are pi bonds. Pi bonds create magnetic fields that add to the big field. Remember the big field? H0 pi bonds in benzene rings in particular create a local field that adds to the big field such that frequency equals 
mu over 2 pi times h0, th this is larger, you add these two vectors together, is larger than normal. Therefore, the frequency needed to flip the hydrogens is larger than normal. So when we see 7, we think, wow, we've got a benzene ring. Now, what's strange about this, and I did a terrible job drawing it, but it's really like two, it looks kind of like two doublets. It almost looks like a quartet, but it's not a quartet because a quartet has this kind of shape. Okay, it's not a quartet. It's two doublets. So what it's saying is you have an area of two and an area of two, doublet, doublet. I keep sh throwing this pattern at you so that you will know this topography. This is not saying there are two benzene rings. This is saying there's one benzene ring with two environments on it, okay? So this means I have a benzene ring somehow, and I'm just putting these on willy-nilly here, somehow with four hydrogens. Now by now, you should know what this means. We have a group of two and a group of two, okay? Let's start putting our molecule together. It's time to do our piecing and our bookkeeping. So I am absolutely committed for life to this little piece here. I feel very confident about this, that we have a T-butyl. That is a terminal piece. The other terminal piece is this methyl that's off by itself somehow. Now, we implied that it might be right next to the benzene ring, and I think it is, but I'm not going to attach it yet. So we have this benzene ring. Now, what is this data telling us? It's saying you have two groups of two that are absolutely, each group is within itself identical. So I've got to have an H and an H like this. this. These two are identical by symmetry. These two identical by symmetry. If I have four total on the ring, I have how many substituents? I have two substituents or two uh, groups hooked onto the ring. And that means it is a di-substituted ring, and it's just a matter of figuring out how to put the substituents on. Now, if I do my bookkeeping at this point, I have taken into account all the hydrogens. Have I taken account all the carbons? 1, 2, 3, 4, 10, 11. It was C11. So, really, all I can do, because this di-substituted ring is an internal position, is hook this on here and hook this on here. That's all I can do right? It works, okay? These hydrogens are benzylic. They are isolated from those H's. Count the bonds. They're four bonds away. These hydrogens are way too far to be split, okay? These, these would give an area of two and a split, a doublet, and similarly, these would. I went over this problem because I want you to be able to deal with that kind of an NMR pattern on this test. Okay, you should be able to deal, this is what's called para-substitution. Para-substitution gives a pair of doublets in the aromatic region. Okay, so again, focus more on your chemical shift table. Okay, so that's the end of this movie. See you in class. Bye.